Look at that. It's new boot day. These ones were slightly wore out. Nice. Those are the exact same boot, just this one's a year and a half old. I just made it to the farm. There goes our there goes our bean head. It'll be hard for me to give you a comparison video now, but that's okay. There's a few key things you'll notice when we get the new one. Bye bye head. Okay, we're gonna do a little digging here today. It's not dry, it's still plenty muddy. I'm still fighting water in the old trench that we'll pump it out again. It's about the fourth or fifth time and it's just going to keep filling in. So we're going to have to stay on top of it and try and get our connections made so we can just fill it in. But um, we're going to start digging for a water line. So I'm going to check out the little mini here and start digging. We are going to use the 12-inch bucket, real skinny, narrow slot because I don't need much of a trench. We're just laying a water line in it and there's no connections to be made. So we are going to put a hydrant right here in this corner. Um, I dug some of my stone out so that I don't bury it all. My fancy black stone that, yeah, whatever. Anyway, and I marked out the line kind of where I want it to go all the way up to the house. And so we got to dig that. We we're also going to set a propane tank over here. And I've got one of two paths that we're going to take to connect these trenches because what we're going to do is dig about four feet deep for the water line, backfill it about halfway and then leave it open for the gas line. So I need to either go that way along the barn and Y into it, or I cut out here and go right across the grass and Y into it. We'll see whichever way I wanna do that. That looks like the electrician's van. I might have to make our connections over there before we dig if it is. But uh, that's the plan here. So I'm gonna go talk to him, see what his plan is for the day. And uh, we'll start digging. Well, the heater in here works, so that's good. Let's do a little digging. Check it out, check it out. So we're plenty deep here, we're about four and a half feet there. But look what that is, do you see it? There's a tile right there. I knew there was one close to my footer on my barn because I remember digging it up when we were digging the foundation for the barn here. And uh, that is in the absolute best possible location for a drain, to drain all the water that's gonna come out of this. And um, I'm gonna backfill this with gravel so the water will drain right through it. Um, but the way these frost-free hydrants are, they work, you gotta bury them deep below the frost line and then when you shut the water off, it drains out the, the upright portion of the drain and you gotta have some stone and stuff down there for it to drain into, but I got a tile. So that's awesome, the water will get away. And now we just start digging and we can come up a little bit so we're not quite so deep. We wanna be right around four foot. Uh, really our frost depth here is um, about 30 inches. So as long as we're below 30 inches, we should be okay. Um, but we're gonna go four foot to be safe.
We are making some progress here. I've made it a little ways. It's a little slow going, but it's okay. I did hit a clay tile right over there. Uh, it's broken, abandoned, no good. There's a plastic right here that we've got to fix. They're every 30 foot through here, so I, that's the third one. Uh, the first one was the one right there by the footer in the, uh, uh, at the foundation of the barn. And right there is another plastic, so. Yeah, we're starting to get a little water in the bottom of the trench, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, we don't have to go down there for anything other than to fix those tile. Um, here we will a little bit, but... Okay, so I'm going to actually go down and talk to Dad and see if he would have any interest in digging for me. Because if he can start digging, then I can start laying the pipe in there and fixing these tile and get our backhoe and do half the backfilling so that... Um, this goes a little faster, so I'm gonna go talk to him. Dad's gonna help me, so I'm gonna take the backhoe down. I'm gonna grab a bucket load of our uh, stone stockpile here, which mostly came out of my driveway. Is that pea gravel that I didn't care for? Uh, we'll use this to help bury the hydrant and just, yeah. You know, same thing I did the other day. Okay, Dad's gonna dig for me. I'm gonna let him practice a little bit before I film him for you guys. He's never run that before. Uh, we're gonna get the hydrant ready. So here's what we got. It's Woodford, Iowa, frost proof, yard hydrant, four foot berry. That's exactly what we need. I've got some fittings in one of these Menards bags right here to convert to our PEX and a street elbow to go in there to make the 90 so I probably need some uh, Teflon tape to put all that stuff together and then I'm gonna need our PEX tool and my roll of PEX that my kids were rolling around like a tire when they were here gonna need my shovel clean out the hole a little bit all right I got the um, the 90 and the PEX adapter in there so now I need to attach my PEX to this and we're gonna get it placed and uh lay some pipe out and then we can start well we gotta fix that tile and yeah we got a lot to do here um i guess i need to cut this this is pex a tubing so it's the expansion type fittings which means we need this little ring we slip on the end here and then use our expansion tool to expand it slip it on there it contracts done um super easy to use it's nice the PEX A is a touch more expensive than PEX B. Not a big deal because I'm, I'm literally using two fittings in this whole line. Um, and it is also a little bit more expensive than a CPVC, a roll of black PVC, whatever. Um, but this is what we have to work with. It's what I uh, have the tools to work with, I guess. It's easier. It's better. It's flexible. If I ever need to dig it up somewhere and cut it and tee into it, it's super easy to do. I can do it as long as I don't rip it out with the backhoe or excavator or whatever we're using. Um, so that's why we're using PEX. It is also um, freeze-proof-ish. I mean, the, it does freeze but it doesn't break and burst when it freezes. So if we happen to get a deep frost, um, the fittings are susceptible, but the line will not. It will expand and uh, not burst. So also a positive. Okay, so we slipped that expansion ring on there. Here's our fancy PEX expansion tool. And uh, yeah, I might need two hands for this. I should get my GoPro so you can see it, right? But we stick that in there and then push it on and it keeps expanding it and then we slip it on that end. Let me let me go let me get my GoPro. Oh you're on. Can you see? Okay, here's how this works. Okay, so now it's fully expanded. And we stick it on and hold it for a second. And it starts shrinking. It's cold. 
I don't think cold helps. I might need heat. Well, I, it should go. It's just going to take longer. Okay, well, I'm an idiot. Um, I bought the wrong fitting. This is a crimp fitting, not an expansion fitting. And I didn't catch it on the package when I bought it. So I don't have the piece that I need to connect those because I gotta have an expansion fitting. Um, I could crimp the stuff on there, but I don't have the crimp tool to do it. So I'm, I would rather do the expansion fitting anyway, uh, which means it looks like a Menards run here. Crimp. On the bright side, Dad's got this little excavator figured out and is um, doing a nice job. Well, look, cut a tile and we got a bunch of water pouring into the trench. I wonder how deep we are here. Okay, well, Dad said he's going to keep digging, so I'm going to run and get what I need. I needed to run halfway that way anyway because uh, I ordered a couple of fittings for my conduit that are in. So I can stop and pick those up on the way and I need to go to the bank. I'm going to move my stuff inside just in case it rains before I get back. Oh, look, good news. The water's going down. We can see more of this field than the other day. Sweet. There's there's still water everywhere, and it's going to start raining tonight, so it might be short-lived. There it is. Found it. It's in the PEX expansion fittings, not the PEX crimp fittings section. I, I was looking down there last time and didn't realize it. Oh, well. Got what I need. I'm back. Dad's still digging. Hour and 45 minutes later. Let's uh, let's get our pipe in. We gotta take take that fitting out, put the new one in. So here's the difference between the expansion fittings and crimp fittings. You can see these are both considered one inch. Uh, clearly, this one is not as big here as this one. They're different on the outside and how they grasp. Grasp. Same size threads on both, but uh, yeah, much more flow through this one. So anyway, yep, yeah, that's that's what we want. Okay, take two on this. Hopefully you guys can see okay. Put our expansion ring on. Expand it. And then we push it on. And hold it for a second. And this time, it should stay unlike the last time when I used the wrong fitting. There you go, watertight seal. So now we gotta get the, the um, this thing, the hydrant, put in the hole where we want it. Aye, aye, aye. I'm gonna have to deal with the water and then we fix that tile and then we fill it in. I'm gonna have to jump down in the hole so I'm gonna go put my muck boots on and take my brand new work boots off so they don't get all muddy. Okay, our hydrant is in, our pipe is buried for a little while. It's very difficult to work with stuff. I thought it would be more flexible than it is. It's not. Uh, and I got the tile fixed here. So I need to kind of hold that pipe straight and dump a bunch of stone in there. Whew. I had to unroll the whole thing because I don't have a spool to unwind it. So it was all twisted. You know, kind of like this, but I got most of it all out enough that it will lay flat in the bottom of this trench after I pull on it a little bit. Sweet. So that's in. So I need to go along with the shovel and bed it a little bit. Just get it so it lays flat in the bottom because we don't want it waving up and down because if it waves up too much, you know, it might not be three foot deep and we need it to be three foot deep closer to four so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna start fixing tile and then we're gonna backfill ah oh, i ran out one coupler short i uh i got all of those fixed this is the fifth one and i'm not doing any that way so if you were watching this and you happen to work for the county health department here here's what you need to know my leach field is going over there 
these tile run north and south and then curve and go that way basically all along here along the house until the ones that were in the basement foundation where they dead ended into the uh, foundation so this one goes and it curves and it heads right on this side of my driveway through the grass over there the next one here right here curves and it comes right on the edge of the grass in the field right on the edge of where my leach field is going to be so from here and then i think there's one more between here and the house that doesn't get cut off um, i'm going to cut them off here and cap this side so that the tile under my leach field are not draining into the tile into the system and they are cut off and they're separated and you don't have to worry about leach field water getting into the drain tile that's how i'm doing it so i decided to take a time out and come back to my electrical project over here so we can get this trench closed up because i'm doing pretty good over there i'm letting dad finish the trench up um so we got to come out of this box here with a two and a half and then i've got this adapter that's going to go to three inch we're going to put this expansion slip joint in there that'll go on up to here and then we've got to get that uh sweep so it's lined up and cut a chunk of three inch to uh mate them up so i'm gonna have to dig a little bit get some of the dirt that's uh, washed in or fell into the hole out so we can move that pipe around a little bit but uh, we should be able to get this and it shouldn't take too awful much oh we made it we're connected we are connected so i'm gonna throw a little stone in right here we're gonna backfill this trench and be done with this i gotta get this electric cable out of the way a little bit better well we're backfilled here you can see our trench settled there from Saturday, since Saturday, from all the freaking rain we've had. Um, I got some stone, and I covered up the tile connections that we've already made. Dad is going to get me the last coupler that I need to make this connection. We didn't have any more, so we had to run to our tile guys. Um, but those are done. I'm going to finish laying this uh, line in here and get it up to the house. Okay. I got the line in there. Um, we've got plenty to get up into the house there, but we need to get the excavator up there and do a little more digging. Dad is kind of in the wrong spot by the phone there, which is fine. Um, but we're gonna backfill a little bit. I want this trench to be about two feet deep um, for the gas line to go in right on top of this. So we're gonna use the excavator here and scoop some dirt back into our hole. I should put the 18 inch bucket on is what I should do, or just use the backhoe. But for right here by the house, we're gonna use this. We may use the backhoe down there in the grass got my connection made dad's bringing the backhoe with the stone so we can dump some stone in here so we can get it underneath and it doesn't uh, sag down settle now this is how we beat the rain dad and i both backfilling pretty smoothly it's much easier with your hands filming is not how we built the rain beat the rain that i know is coming whoop see drop the camera I'm trying to switch hands all right we're back filling it to about two foot depth 18 inches two foot that's how deep my gas line needs to be I'm just gonna keep walking through and just kind of patting that down and making a nice bed for the gas line. Okay, um, we've got our back filled and tamped down. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna walk it. Oh, there's a high spot right there. Uh, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So um, right here by the, by the hydrant and the barn, that's not gonna have gas line in it. So I'm gonna push this stuff in with the blades, back fill that a little bit better. And then we have one last thing we need to do. And that is uh, dig the trench for the gas line to the tank, which is going to sit back over there. So we're gonna we're gonna dig right along the barn here. I think I was debating on whether to take the angle or come here and make the bend. And I'm gonna come here and make the bend. So I'm gonna push some of this dirt out of the way, and then we're just gonna dig right through here. I think that will work. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my stone, driveway stone, and pour it, put it in there where I want the tank to go. And uh, then I'm gonna call the guy and say, hey, I'm ready for you. And I have no idea when they'll come and set the tank. Hopefully it won't take real long. I do believe that I am done with this little mini 
excavator and I kind of feel bad for having it as long as I have so we're gonna load her up and get her returned I gotta grab his bucket over here I think I can grab it the big bucket in the small one or do I gotta switch them we'll try big thanks to the uh, neighbor that let me borrow that and use it I'll get it back to him here in a little bit uh, just gonna look at the trench a little closer make sure everything looks good and uh, oh crap maybe I'm not done with it I gotta do a little bit up by the house yet to get that line in I forgot about that uh, all right this might be very very risky but I'm gonna attempt to get in here with our backhoe I think I can sit right there and reach this but basically this chunk of dirt has to move because this seam right here in the uh, from the concrete forms down 16 bricks wherever that is is um, where the hole is through the wall that this line needs to go into um, so we've got to get that out of there and this is all pea stone underneath this little bit of dirt so it's gonna it's gonna collapse we're gonna have to dig a bunch out of here I think I can dig out here farther and this stuff will just roll away from it so I don't have to get right up too close to this uh, they did put some grounding rods in there that I've got to be cognizant of and uh, make sure that we're not getting too close to those. But the backhoe's got a lot of reach. So I think I can make that work. But we're going to do it right now before we get rid of that mini. Just in case I don't like it, then we'll, we'll get her off of there and, and use that. So I'm not going to film very much of this because there's too much risk here. Uh, but slow and steady is the name of the game. We don't go fast. We just go slow and we take a little dig. I should have dad doing this because he's a much better backhoe operator than I am with much more experience. But at least if I break something doing it this way, it's my fault and I don't get to blame him. And he won't feel bad about doing it. So nice and slow and steady and we'll get it. Let's take a look. Okay. Uh, I think that might work. We might have to do a little shovel work there to connect the two. I need to go inside and get a piece of rebar or something and stick it through the foam so I can figure out where that hole's at and I know where to cut a bigger hole at on the outside. Sweet! We got daylight. So we can cut that out inside and shove our tube through there. Got it in. So I was just burying it a little bit. Look, that right there is the original ground level. Whew. We got to build up a couple feet right there so I need to get a can of spray foam or something caulk and fill in the hole so that uh, we don't get any water in there I am gonna take a little bit of a gamble and leave this open right now I think I'll get some spray foam if we've got a can and uh, fill that in tonight but uh, I'm gonna leave this trench open they've got to run the gas line basically right on top of us. Maybe I should try and get a little bit in there. Ah, they're coming on Tuesday to set the propane tank. I called the guy and said, we're ready. And he said, we'll plan on Tuesday. I said, okay. So I've got a little bit of time, but um, we can backfill a little bit of this. After I get that hole filled in, I can get it up to in here or something. And the gas line goes right there. Which is why we ran these two together, because they're right there. Uh, the water line going in is actually in this seam. So it's gonna be right down there. So there's no reason to fill all this back in anyway because we got to run a water line to my well, which is going to be out front, I think, um, through there. So, yeah, but we're making progress. That's good. I've got so many rocks in my boots, I can barely walk. I was going to wait till I got to the farm to take them off and switch to my other shoes, but I don't think I can make it. Well, it didn't seem like a lot, but they sure hurt. It's not the most secure load I've ever made, but I got two chains and binders and a strap on there. It isn't going anywhere, and we're going a mile and a half. We're going to stop at the farm, top her off with fuel. And uh, what a big job to have out of my way, off my mind. Now, if only I could get a septic system and a well. Oh, they're coming. Or so I've been told. See if they ever actually make it. Well, they will someday. Because I can't move in until they do. Um, 
I'm going to get my drone out one of these days. I don't know which one of these days, but one of them. Take some aerial pictures here. Um, that way I have very good maps of where these lines are at. I left all the tile pieces that I cut off uh, kind of right where I dug them up so that I know where the tile lines were crossed at. And I'll be able to see all that in the picture. Uh, I can label them then, print it off and label it and find a secure place to put it that I will remember where I put it when I need it in 35 years. Right? That's the goal. Never have to dig through them ever again. Someday though, I can guarantee it'll happen and I'll want to have that information. So that's the plan there. Okay, I got everything wrapped up. I got that es uh, mini excavator taken back to its rightful owner. I got um, the backhoe put away, button stuff up down there at the seed warehouse and everything, and it's raining. And judging by the radar, it's gonna rain for a while and we might end up with more than an inch out of this, like they say. So uh, I gotta stop in the house and make sure that I, I had the lights turned on in the basement when I was down there. So unplug that, make sure the doors are all shut and everything. The drywall guys were there today. Uh, they're gonna finish up tomorrow and they were trying to get some air moving to dry some stuff out so they could finish it tomorrow. Uh, so we'll get all that taken care of and then uh, I'm heading home. So having these um, lines dug in is a huge project out of the way that I am thankful to be done with. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I should have done it back in August, but I was waiting for septic system stuff and I ended up running out of time to wait for that. So we got it done. It's in and um, they're bringing a propane tank next week. So that's awesome. Um, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. It looks like it's going to be raining most of the day. Uh, they did not bring a new bean head for me today. I was hoping they would. They did not. So if they don't bring it tomorrow, we might make a trip to the dealer just to go take a look and kill some time because what else am I going to do? Plus I got a couple seed customers up that way that it would be good to go and see too. So, oh, let me show you something. Check it out. The electrician was here today. A beautiful, nice job with the electric panel installation. That's a lot of breakers. I hope he labels them. <laughs> That is a lot. Man, there's not a lot of spaces left, is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I assume something's going in that one. We got a sub panel in the garage though too, so that's all right. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great night. I got a seed truck coming in the morning too, so we got to get that unloaded. We'll see you again tomorrow, I, most likely. Um, I'll probably find enough to do to make a video, so. Uh, have a great night. Uh, like and subscribe. That's what I was looking for. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Like I said the other day, I promise that I do make more exciting videos when we're in the fields and or I have projects in the shop and things are uh, happening. They're just not happening a lot right now. We dug trenches today. So subscribe, please. Get me up to 20,000. Thank you. See you, everybody.